Welcome, human. Click the subscribe button to join the T-Virus community. The Flash movie. This has been a long time coming. The Flash has deserved a big screen adaption for decades. So let's dive into this. Barry Allen is dealing with a lot of pain and suffering. And uh, it's terrible. It's really bad. His mother was murdered. Barry Allen's father was blamed for it. And he's been incarcerated for years, many years. And Barry is trying to figure out a way to free his father and to save his mother, stop his mother from being murdered. And a lot of humans, they love their mother. They have a connection with their mother. So it's understandable the choices that Barry Allen makes in this movie. Is it the right thing? No. Is it selfish? Yes. Especially considering that he is a superhero. He is not a regular person. However, just because someone is a superhero doesn't mean they don't have the same sorts of feelings as you do with ordinary average individuals. So I understand the choices that Barry makes in this movie, but it doesn't make it right. But because you understand it, and most individuals would be behind that choice, the choices based upon them most likely doing the same thing if the same sorts of circumstances happen and if they had the same sort of powers. Changing events of the past is a big deal. You know, you do one thing and it changes everything. And as someone like myself, who is a big fan of DC Comics, I've read so many DC Comics, a lot of Flash comics. I'm actually going to be one of the few reviewers of this movie that is a real DC fan. We're not talking about... You know, oh, I'm just someone that watches shows and movies. I have knowledge of these characters. I have knowledge of the comic books. And this is important because it really will make the difference in terms of the experience for this movie, the expectations and having a full grasp and understanding of what's presented. So you may be wondering, okay, how do you feel about the characters presented in the movie, Terrence? Before I get into that, I'm going to tell you this. On a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being horseshit on a hot, smelly as day, and 10 being mind-blowingly amazing, I'm going to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. I think it's pretty damn good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. So, let's go over the characters in this sense. So, we have two Barry Allens. We have the main one, and then we have the younger Barry. Ezra Miller may be a monster in real life, but this man has great acting chops. Sorry about that. A goofy human interrupted my video. But like I was saying, Ezra Miller may be a monster in real life, but this man is a good actor. It is very difficult to play two different versions of the same character. That is no easy thing to do. And to have it be convincing on top of that, I think Ezra handled that very well, surprisingly well. I think that him as this character, this is the best that we've seen him outside of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is a masterpiece, by the way. If you disagree with me, I really don't give a fuck. But Ezra Miller deserves his props as an actor. I enjoyed the main Barry and the younger Barry. Now, the younger Barry was goofy and annoying, but it was supposed to be like that. It works because of the differences between the two Barrys. You don't want them to be the exact same thing because that would have been boring. I don't want to see that. I want to see some differences. And when I think about myself, the Terrence that I am today versus the Terrence that I was when I was 18 or 10 years ago, there are differences. And I can picture myself clashing with myself, having issues with the past Terrence. 
for not figuring things out sooner and so on and so on. There's so many different ways I can break that down, but it makes sense. You're like, what's wrong with this motherfucker? But this motherfucker's me. So I like the two berries and the way that they work and how they use their powers and the different techniques that they use based upon experience. Of course, the main berry, he knows all the ins and outs of his powers, even though he figured out what to do with full time travel. Because in Zack Snyder's Justice League, we saw that he only went back like so many seconds or a couple minutes or whatever just to deal with that particular situation. You know, with uh, the dark side thing, right? And Steppenwolf and all that. With so many interruptions of this video, I now understand why Reverse Flash destroys timelines. It, it's just humans, they're, they're fucking trash. They don't get it. But anyway... So let's go on to Zod. What did I think of Zod? Zod was cool, but he's not in the movie as much as you would think. Okay? Uh, Michael Shannon, if I'm not mistaken, is the actor who plays Zod. And he's a perfect Zod. Like, let's just be real about that. Regardless of how you feel about Man of Steel, he's a perfect Zod. If anyone says otherwise, these motherfuckers have not read any Superman comic books. You can miss me with that shit. So Zod... We see that he fights Supergirl, which, you know, I'll get to her in, in a moment. But Zod fights Supergirl, and he actually bodies her multiple times. Like, she shows up, she thinks, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to defeat Zod. I'm going I'm to do this and do that. And Zod's just like, okay, bitch, sit down. You ain't your cousin. The fuck you mean? You know, give, give me a real opponent. Fuck is this Supergirl and shit. So I like the way, you know, the whole Zod and Supergirl thing went down. Like, that shit was uh, pretty cool. Because I thought it was going to go another way. Because, you know, in this day and age, you always have the women beat up the, the men. And the women are perfect. And, you know, they always uh, dumb up the men and power them down just to elevate a female character. They didn't do that goofy shit. And I'm glad they didn't because that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm like, if Superman was struggling with Zod, why the fuck would Supergirl be able to beat him? That shit don't make no goddamn sense. So I'm glad it didn't go that way. And in terms of Superman, we all wanted to see Henry Cavill Superman in this movie. Like, instead of this particular version of Supergirl that they decided to go with. This is not traditional Supergirl at all, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Where's the blonde hair? You know, her being white with the skirt and shit. That's the real Supergirl. But with this weird interpretation of the character, at least I didn't hate it. Even though this is not traditional Supergirl. Like, I didn't hate seeing her. It was just more like, and you couldn't get the real Supergirl because of what? But she's fine. Like, her dialogue and stuff, she don't say anything agenda-based, nothing cringy. I'm like, okay, at least she's behaving in a way that I would associate with Supergirl. She wasn't written by clowns in the sense of her dialogue and how she behaves. So Supergirl, she was okay. She was okay. And, you know, Sasha Cowley, she looks, I believe that's her name, right? Like, she looks good as, as Supergirl in terms of this interpretation. I mean, I will always prefer Melissa Benoist in that terrible Supergirl show. Like, she was a great Supergirl, but her show was trash. After the first two seasons. Like let's just let's just be honest about that shit. So Supergirl. You know she was alright. Zod was dope but he wasn't in the movie enough. I wish he was in there more. Ben Affleck is Batman. The opening of this movie. Ben Affleck has some great scenes as Batman. Batman fans out there. You gonna love the shit with Ben Affleck's Batman. That shit was fire. Michael Keaton's Batman. If you didn't like Michael Keaton's Batman and Batman 89 and Batman Returns, you may not like him here because he is exactly like that with just a little bit of extra stuff. Because the way that he was fighting in this movie, he wasn't getting down like that in 89 and Batman Returns. If anything, he got better at the combat, which is what Batman does. He gets better over time. He's a master martial artist, master detective. And no matter how great he is, you see him one month, you come back the, the another month, he's smarter, he's faster, he's stronger, and so on and so on. I'm Batman. There's a reason why you say that. Oh, how, how can Batman do this and that? He's Batman. And that explains it all. 
if you have read DC comic books. You need not say anything else. Michael Keaton is Batman, great. If somebody tells me that Michael Keaton Batman is the best Batman ever, there's no arguments for me. I love all the actors who have played Batman, except George Clooney. And funny I say that now, considering what happens with this movie. But anyway, the action is good. Love all the action, all the fight scenes. Very creative, very imaginative. I did not have any problems with the CGI. I know there's some humans that, that are saying that. I didn't have an issue with it. I saw the movie in IMAX, and I thought it looked really good. I'm like, what format did you see the fucking movie in? But nonetheless, you know, it could be just a preference thing. If humans didn't like it, they didn't like it. But you can't do the Flash without a lot of CGI. And you will have humans that understand that. They may believe, hey, it could have been done better. Okay, that's your opinion. To me, that shit was good enough. Like, I didn't have any moments where the CGI took me out of the movie. I was like, you got to do what you got to do. Because the Flash, the way that the character operates and his powers, you're going to have a lot of CGI. Either humans are going to like it or they're not. It is what it is. But I didn't have any issues with the CGI. And here's the thing. You need to understand that this is a Flash movie. There are cameos in it, but it is a Flash movie through and through. This movie is not about the cameos. It's really not. No matter how many Batman you see, no matter, when you think about Kryptonians, no matter how many Kryptonians you see, no matter how bomb Supergirl is looking, even though it's not the traditional Supergirl, it is still a Flash movie. You have two versions of Barry Allen. It is a Flash movie. It is about this man freeing his father because the justice system is fucking trash and it always has been. And he's trying to bring his mother back to life. That's what it's about. It's about a son's relationship with his mother. A son's relationship with his father. And struggling with doing the right thing. Because even though he's a superhero, there are things that he wants. Many can understand that. Especially if you have a good relationship with your mother and or father. And... Especially if you lost one of them. You know what I mean? Like, loss is... A lot of humans, they can't deal with it. You know like how humans say everyone grieves in their own way? This is not true. There's not 8.1 billion ways to grieve, right? Humans are stupid when they, when they say shit. They need to rephrase things and they need to think before they speak. There's not a billion different ways to grieve. There's only a couple. And it's the same shit that you encounter time and time again. Humans dying is inevitable. It's, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Right? And certain things when it comes to the multiverse, when it comes to time traveling, reversing time and all that kind of stuff... There are actually rules. There are things that you can't change. And if you try, it's going to make everything else worse. And is it really worth it for you to get that moment of happiness and everyone else has to suffer as a result? Would a superhero really do that? There's a lot of stuff in this movie. A lot of deep stuff that I think certain humans, they don't get. Because they didn't get what they wanted. Or it didn't flow a certain way or whatever. They skip over all the great stuff in the film. And, that, and that's fine. You know, I don't really give a shit if humans like or dislike anything. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just here to tell you what's up. Because I am a real Flash fan. When it comes to the Flash TV show with Grant Gustin. The first two seasons are great. I like seasons three and four which were pretty good, but they weren't as good as seasons one and two. In fact, when you think about the show having nine seasons, right? Seven of the nine seasons are not as good as the first two. And that's just what it is. So are there things that the Flash show did better 
than the movie, sure, but the movie did many things better than the show. And most humans didn't even watch the show, and most humans that watch the show and or the movie, they're not real Flash fans. They've never read Flash comic books. They don't know anything about the character. All they know is what they have seen in a show or a movie or an animated movie or some type of animated show. That's the extent of their knowledge. They don't know a goddamn thing. So I want you to think about these things when hearing and listening to what someone has to say about the Flash. You're not listening to actual fans. So to me, if a Flash fan tells me they don't like the movie, I can respect that even if I disagree. But if it's just a normie, a motherfucker that don't read comic books, that don't read the Flash, and they don't like the movie... I don't give a shit. I'm not going to value their opinion to the same degree. I'll respect it and blah, okay, yeah, it is what it is, but I would more so respect a real Flash fan that has a preference and things that they wanted that they didn't get as opposed to a motherfucker that's not a fan. Fans come first to me. You're a Flash fan. Oh, did you like it? No. No, I didn't like it. Oh, that's, that's, you know, for me, I did like it, but... I respect you because, you know, you and I are the same like that. We Flash fans, you know, so I, I can get down with that. But this other motherfucker over here, he ain't no Flash fan talking about he didn't like the movie. I'm like, what the fuck do I care what you think? You ain't no fan, nigga. So, to me, the cameos that happened in this movie, there were a handful, really, that surprised me. And... They were short, but they worked for me. Someone can say all day, oh, they could have did more. They could have did more of this and more of that. But they didn't need to do more. This is a Barry Allen story where it's personal for him. And while this is not a beat-by-beat adaption of the Flashpoint storyline, which I read, by the way. I'm not talking about these motherfuckers that just saw the animated movie. I actually read the comic book story arc. It's not a beat by beat of that, but they pull from it quite heavily. But I do like the differences that they present in this film because it kept me guessing. Would I have preferred a beat by beat adaption of Flashpoint from DC Comics? Absolutely. No argument there. But I like this movie a lot. It's not perfect. If it would have had Henry Cavill Superman instead of this odd interpretation of Supergirl, if it would have had an actual villain, then I would have given the movie a 10 out of 10 instead of an 8.5 out of 10. Because I feel that those things could have elevated the plot a lot. But without those elements, for me, the movie really worked. And I got to see a lot of stuff with the Flash in terms of his powers and his abilities that I've been waiting to see on the big screen. So I'm down for The Flash 2, if that's possible, with Ezra Miller, or with a different actor that's Wally West or something. I'm open to that. But if they want to bring Ezra Miller back, I'm not against that, just because he did a good job, especially playing uh, two different versions of Barry Allen. But the man is is something wrong with this motherfucker. So if they get rid of him, he did it to himself. I like him in the role, but I don't like him as a person based upon the stuff that I know that they have on video and all that other shit. It's terrible. And I tried defending this man for a long time, but he just he just kept fucking himself over. But apparently he's better now or whatever. Congratulations. But I'm just saying that that's all still there. Let me know in the comment section down below your top five favorite moments of this movie. And let me know your top three characters in this movie. You get three. And if they make a sequel, The Flash 2, The Flash whatever, what is it that you want to see? What is it that you really want to see incorporated into that Flash sequel? Let me know in the comment section down below. 
I love this movie. It's not perfect, but there is a lot of greatness in it. I love the concept. I love how the characters are used. And while I would have made a completely different movie, I am not mad at this. And as a DC fan, as a Flash fan, this movie is awesome. And you should give it a shot. Do not waste your time listening to individuals who are not real Flash fans. I'm telling you that right now. Don't do it. Don't do it. But regardless of who you listen to, me or anyone else, make up your own mind. Watch the movie for yourself and see how you feel about it. Your opinion, whether myself or anyone else agrees, is the best opinion. Whatever you think, but you have to develop your own opinion. That's important. Don't be influenced by anyone else. But if you're going to be influenced by someone, at least listen to real fans and not motherfuckers that act like they fans, but they not, if you got to choose. But I appreciate you being here. I know this is a, a longer review than what I normally do, but there's a lot to talk about. So with me, I exist upon billions and billions of humans. I have friends. I have individuals that I consider to be family, individuals that I care about. But I'm okay with being alone. And in a way, I've been alone my entire life, unable to relate to anyone. I've never met a single person like myself. It's never happened. But that's okay, though, because I don't require that. So if I had access to the speed force or the negative force, I am telling you I would fuck this timeline up to get what the fuck I want and damn everything else. I'll be one of those evil speedsters. I'm just being real. Then I roll up on uh, Sasha Cali, Supergirl, like, hey, hey, how you doing? You know, I, I did save your life. You know, I was thinking we can go on one of them Kryptonian dates, you know what I'm saying, and you ain't got to hold back on me because I like it rough. So, <laughs> put it on me. Terrence out.